Well, hello again, and, and welcome to another Wednesday's Word. This, uh, my name is Pastor Gary from Believers Fellowship, and uh, today I want to spend some time in Isaiah. Uh, but before we do that, before we take this journey in Isaiah, let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we just come to you right now. Father, Father, I just thank you for your grace and your mercy. Father, I thank you for this message. Father, Father, I pray that uh, it just bless those uh, that hear it, Father, as much as it has blessed me, Father. And it's a great reminder, Father, Father, I pray for our country. I pray for the just uh, our world, Father, with all the things that are going on, Father, Father, uh, just with the sickness and and. and just lost a life, Father, lost the jobs, Father, just uh, kids, you know, finishing up school that, that, you know, they actually hadn't been in a school for two months, Father. Father, I pray that you just comfort them, Father. Father, I just pray that you just move in a mighty way, Father. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, amen. So, um, like I said, I want to spend some time in Isaiah and, and, you know, the world gives us plenty of things to fear. I mean, if you just spend 10 minutes uh, watching the news, uh, there's so much going on that it's hard to discern what's truth and what's what's not, uh, you know, or, or you know, for some of us, it, it, the fear comes from that two o'clock in the you know, 2 a.m. phone call from our family, or it's that one doctor's appointment, or it's a, a one call for us to report to our boss's office. You know, this creates fear within a lot of us and, and fear it could be crippling. It, 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 it could paralyze us. It could cause us to second guess all of our decisions. It's, and then we start playing the what if game. You know, I'm, I'm speaking on this topic today because I really need to hear it. Um, you know, last week, last week, and, and I, you know, to be honest, up until a couple hours ago, I was, I struggled with fear. Um, you know, and, and it's not because of finances, it's, it's not because of jobs. Uh, we got some, some, some pretty, pretty scary news, uh, regarding Sophia and Aiden, uh, some medical news last week. Um, we found out that Sophia has a cyst on her ovaries and, and then we found out a couple, a couple of days later, you know, Aiden's been having migraines and, and so they did a, a scan of his, of his brain and, they found a cyst on his brain and, and, and there's a potential of, of it putting pressure on his brain. And, and so now, you know, of course, the doctors, you know, the doctors are, you know, don't nothing to worry about. We'll monitor it as far as Sophia's is concerned. And, and you know, they're sending us to a neurosurgeon uh, for, for Aiden. And, and so I'd ask that you pray for both of them. But, you know, I cried out. Why? And I, I mean, who is it scared? Who is it? Who doesn't live in fear of losing their family when they hear news like this? Right. I mean, so I cried out to God, why, why, oh, you know, why would you do this? And it wasn't until this morning that, that I came across Isaiah 41. And it's my prayer that this passage bless you as much as it has blessed me. And so let's go to uh, Isaiah 41, 10, and we're going to be in Isaiah 41, uh, verses 10 through 13. Sorry. Um, and this is God's word. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not anxiously look upon you, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, surely I will help you. Surely I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Behold, all those who are angered at you will be shamed and dishonored. For those who contend with you will be as nothing and will perish. You will seek those who will quarrel with you, but you will not find them. Those who war with you will be as nothing and non-existent. For I am the Lord your God who upholds your right hand, who says to you, do not fear. I will help you. You know, verse 10 is one of the greatest, has some of the greatest promises in scripture because of our relationship with God. We don't need to fear anything. You know, this is not an attempt at positive thinking. You know, our hope is not putting away these negative thoughts. Instead, our confidence and hope rest in the power of God. 
See, in verse 10, God gives us five promises that of why we should not fear. The first promise is that, you know, if you look at verse 41.10, the first promise is that we should take courage because God is with us. God is with us. See, verse 10 says, do not fear for I'm with you. That's great news. If we can hold on to this fact, you know, then we're able to stand firm and remain strong and courageous against evil and, and even against temptation. When we think that God is absent or doubt whether he is with us, when we are anxious and frightened, we need to stop. The psalmist tells us in, in, in Psalms 46, 10, be still and know that I am God. We need to do the same. Be still and know that God is God. And he promises to be with us. With that in our spirit, heart and mind, we can hold fast and be confident that to the fact that God is with us. And if God is with us, and if we truly believe that, then we can stand on the foundation that he will not, that we will not be overwhelmed by life. In, in order to face our fears, the first thing to remember is that God is with you. You know, David, you know, writes it in Psalms 23, 4, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. See, those are great words of comfort when we are going through these difficult times in our life. We do not fear because we are confident that God is with us. In Matthew 28, 20, after giving the great commission, Jesus promises presence when he said, lo, I am always with you always, even to the end of the age. When you are filled with fear, like I was, we have to hold on and remember the truth and declare it out loud that I will have no fear because he is always with me. See, the problem for most of us is, is that we are not aware of his presence as we stumble through life, oblivious to the fact that the Lord is with us and we will never leave those that, and he will never leave those that who belong to him. If you are filled with fear today, it may be because you're acting like Jesus is not there. You have to declare that first truth. That you will live without fear because God is with you. The second promise is that God says that he is our God. He says that he is our God. Let's look at verse 10 again. Do not fear for I am with you. Do not anxiously look about you for I am your God. The New King James Version says, be not dismayed. To be dismayed literally means that you have completely lost courage, that you are utterly and thoroughly disheartened. Notice that the key to not being dismayed is to make sure that God is your God. In 1 Samuel 36, 30, verse 6, uh, we read this about David. Uh, Moreover, David was greatly distressed because the people spoke of stoning him, for all the people were embittered, each one because of his sons and his daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. So what changed? David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. It wasn't David's strength. It wasn't. It was. It was all God's strength. And that's because David knew the Lord was his God. So my question to you is, is he your God? This promise becomes real and active when you personalize your relationship by trusting in Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Can you say he is my God? I am convinced if each of us would see God as big and powerful, as true and trustworthy, as faithful and loving as he really is, then our fears would go away. Because when we trust God is with us, we won't fear over things. The third promise God gives us in this verse is God says that he will strengthen us. If we go back to verse 10, it says, do not fear for I am with you. Do not be, do not anxiously look about you for I am your God. I will strengthen you. We need to learn and to lean on God to strengthen us. It cannot be our strength that gets us through these tough times. It needs to be God's strength and power. 
And we're reminded this, what, what Paul wrote in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. In his last letter to Timothy in 2 Timothy 4.17, Paul wrote, but the Lord stood with me and strengthened me. Look, many times we're able to say that we have been strengthened by the Lord. You know, how, how many times can we say that, that we've been strengthened by the Lord? That strengthening comes when we have built up that relationship with the Lord through the power of the Holy Spirit. So that when trouble comes our way, and make no mistake, it will come our way. Because that's the life of a Christian. We know the way out, and that way out is through Jesus. That fourth promise that, that we have is that God says he will help us. It says in verse 10, do not fear for I am with you. Do not anxiously look about you for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you. I will trust God to help me. And that's what I needed to realize is that God will help me through the pain, through the fear, because he is my God and he will strengthen me. Because God is always present. He promises his strength and he promises to help us. Hebrews 13, 6 reminds us that the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What will man do to me? Isn't it great to say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. And if he is my helper, and if he is your helper, you have nothing to fear. We have nothing to fear. Because people can do nothing to us. Jesus reminds us God is our friend and God will never unfriend us. We can, you know, on, I'm new to Facebook and the whole friend, unfriend things. God will never unfriend us. When we do something stupid or when we're stressed out, he will, inst but instead he promises to help us. Even when we sin and we repent, God is there to forgive us. You know, this last promise is, is, is that he will uphold us. If we go back to verse 10, it says, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not anxiously look about you, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you. Surely I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Can you see that? God will uphold me and you with his righteous right hand. But that's only if you have a relationship with you, with, with God. If you don't have a relationship with God, then none of these promises are pro your promises. See, God will uphold us with his righteous right hand. The world, the word uphold means to hold, to hold up or grasp or to support. The idea is like the word is like the word undergird, which means to make secure underneath. We are upheld by his righteous right hand. This is his promise. And in Psalms 145, 13 through 14, we read the Lord is faithful to all his promises and loving toward all he has made. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. He helps us and he holds us. And again, Remember, we need to submit to him, not to the world. God gives us assurances of his strength, that, that his help and support, you know, to help us and support us in, in, in life. We need to realize who God is, his attributes and, and his great desire to help us. The Lord will never leave those who belong to him because God is with us. We shouldn't have, we, we should never fear. God reveals his presence in the midst of our circumstances. The last thing, this is now, this is an awesome uh, uh, illustration. And this is something that, that um, it, if you could just, I want you to get, look at verse 10 again. And then we're also going to go to verse 13. And so let's read verse 13 together. In, in verse 13, God says, for I am the Lord, your God, who upholds your right hand, who says to you, do not fear I will help you. Now, 
if you look at 10 and, and 13 side by side, both verses tell us not to fear. Both verses tell us God is our God. Both verses tell us that God will hold us up uh, or uphold us. Uh, they both say, and they both refer to the right hand. What's awesome about this picture, this illustration to me is that in verse 10, it speaks of God, God's right hand holding us up. And in verse 13, God says that he will hold our right hand. And so with our, with his right hand, he's holding, you know, he, he, he's holding us up. And he's holding our right hand with his left hand. You know, taken together, these two verses present a powerful picture of a parent and a child. The father's mighty right hand can defeat any enemy. But in his left hand, he is holding his child's right hand. I picture God holding us just as a, as a parent would comfort their child. God looks at us and we look at him and we see his love and power and we experience his comfort. As he's protecting us with his right and, and he's holding our right hand. That's awesome. So do not fear because God is with you. God is our, God is your God. He will strengthen you. He will help you. He will uphold you. See, there are examples throughout the Bible that speak of these promises. God was with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fire. God was with Daniel in the lion's den. He did not remove them from their situation, but he was with them and walked with them. He held their right hand as he upheld them with his right hand. See, church, God is with you. He is all around you, over you by you, inside you, around you, and underneath you. So if God is for us, who could be against us? Nobody. So do not fear what the world will throw your way because we have victory in Jesus. Amen? Amen. Well, I just, uh, you know, that was more for me, and I hope you were blessed with that. Uh, I know I was, and uh, I pray that that you could just take something from it. I thank you for just uh, allowing me the opportunity to share my heart with you. And uh, I would ask that you pray, uh, pray for my family as we pray for the others that are on the, the prayer line and, and, and that are on our, that are in our hearts. Um, let's go to the Lord in prayer again. Father God, Father, we do, Father, ask for just for healing, Father. Father, you are Jehovah Rapha, which means God is our healer, Father. But, you know, yes, physical healing, Father. But you are a healer of our, of our, of our spiritual, for sp our spiritual healing as well, Father. Father, and I pray that you just touch each and every one of us, Father. And let us not focus on the what ifs, Father, but focus on the things we know, Father. And that you are with us, Father, for those of us that call you, Father, for those of us that have a personal relationship with you through Jesus Christ, Father. Father, I pray for those that don't know you and those that have walked away from you, Father, that can't claim those promises, Father. Father, I pray that you put somebody in their path, Father, to share the gospel, the good news with them, Father, so they too can know the love that you have for them, Father. Father, I do pray for all those on the prayer line. Father, I pray uh, that you just, your will be done. Father, I pray for the doctors. Father, I pray that you give them wisdom and discernment, Father. Father, I ask all this in Jesus' precious and holy name, Father. Amen. Well, amen. Well, hey, it was it was great to see all those uh, of you that were in church and, and online on Facebook. Uh, be sure to continue to like and comment um, and share. Uh, and I'm praying for you and we look forward to seeing you again on Sunday, either on Facebook in the comment section or in our one of our uh, two live services. Uh, with that being said, God bless.